Lawnmower racing fulfills all the requirements of a truly English sport. The rules are faintly absurd. It takes place on an appalling track on Sundays after closing time, generally in the rain, and you don't need a babysitter. There are three classes. This is class two, motorized with grass bucket attached. For racing purposes, all of them have the blades removed. That patron saint of mowers, Queen Bodicea, would have been disqualified. Jim Gavin, your president of the British Lawnmower Racing Association. Yeah. Tell me, where do you come from? Oh, Southern Ireland. You do? Yeah, with an oh. accent like that. Well, what are you doing over here? I came over here in the mid-60s to do, uh, when club racing was pretty good here, to do one year's racing, motor racing, and then yes. go back. And you then you stayed? Yeah, I liked it so much, I stayed. Now, tell me, did you think up lawnmower racing yourself? Uh, well, a bunch of us in the pub did one night. I had come back from a, a long distance power rally abroad and uh, we were talking about motorsport in general and the high cost of it and that was in the early 70s it was expensive even then and we were thinking about doing something around here and the only things we had around here to do other than, other than cars because cars of course have already been done uh, we thought of combine harvesters at first but there are only three in the county and they're a bit of expensive so the obvious thing was lawnmowers there was a guy moving a lawnmower up and down on the green in, in Whisper Green outside the pub and we put on the first Grand Prix for lawnmowers in 1973, and it was very good. This is class one, motorized, but you push it yourself. Under the rules, aerodynamic gnomes are permitted. Had any offers of big money at all? Well, there have been a couple of people who've come along and said, We have decided to put some money into your sport. And uh, to my mind, that's almost rude and patronizing. It's rather like walking up to a girl and saying, I have decided to take you out to a dinner. <laughs> out to dinner? I would have thought you asked first. But yes, we had a few offers, and then every now and again you get somebody coming along who wants to say, I want an exclusive to photograph this for the year, or I want to film it and sell it, and I'll give you half the money and stuff not interested. Now uh, tell me, do you, do you soup up the engine? Yeah, we allow them to soup it up any way they like as long as they keep, as long as it's the manufacturer's engine, or one offered by the manufacturer as an optional extra, and as long as they keep the standard cylinder block on it. So what sort of horsepower could you get out of one of those things? I don't think, I, I don't, I don't think any of the guys have ever had them on, on a brake, on, uh, on a dynamometer, but to give you an idea, um, of course, it's highly illegal, but uh, it's, a lot of them run them on the road just to test them when they've chewed them up a bit. And most of them are faster than a standard Mini on acceleration. Really? And, uh, and uh, Group 3, the ones with the wheel, will, will, will certainly top 65 and get on to 70 miles an hour on a flat road. It frightens the life out of anyone passing by. Well, here we go. The bumps really make our eyes pop out on stalks. Now, the great thing is when I go round this corner to stop myself from skidding. Directly you start skidding, aim into the skid like this. That's better. Now I'm going better. Yes, now keep going. Dolly, that bottling is something absolutely phenomenal. Whoa, 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 whoa. Try not to lose the track at the bottom. That's it. Now, round here, through the, through the grass. That's right, that's better. That's it. Well, Sterling Moss, you must be the greatest name in world motor racing. 
What on earth makes you go in for a sport like this? Well, you've had a go at it. You can feel it. It's fantastic fun. You don't need to be that good. You can have fun. You can spin off. Everybody's very friendly. They come and help you. Uh, we have a 12-hour race where if it's something breaks, they'll come along, lend you bits and pieces. It, it's a great sport. It requires, I think, quite, quite a lot of skill if you're going to go fast, as you as probably noticed. I did um, indeed. Mm, well, it's, it's, it's fun, though, isn't it? Yes, it's tremendous yeah. fun. It really is. I really enjoyed it. It's the first time I've ever done it. You know? well, yeah, well, there's the point. You see, first time you've done it and you can have fun, whereas many things, the first time you try it, like squash, until you're good, you don't enjoy it. Well, this one, I think you enjoy it for the first day. Can this in any way compensate for your great days of motor racing? Well, it, gi it gives me competition. I mean, I have fun in that way. It does require a certain amount of skill. It isn't like Formula One racing. It is most like when I started with 500cc cars, friendly and competitive. But, uh, yes, it helps for a little bit, I guess. Sterling, every sport nowadays seems to become so terribly commercialised. Do you think in the not-so-distant future you're going to find that lawnmower racing is going to be sponsored by some big firm and it's going to become a thoroughly cutthroat business? I have a double feeling about that. I hope not, because it's very much a family sport. My wife takes part. I've got my son. He's only a year old with me but equally I would love to have a sport where we go across and have beat the French on some you know some place where they normally play balls or something I would love to play play it against the Germans so I don't want to see it because I think it would spoil the sport and yet on the other hand I think it'd be great to have a go at the foreigners actually if you want to know well we got a good start of them anyway exactly. haven't we? a typically English